In this video, we will discuss the cytokine storm that occurs in COVID-19 and is the main cause of the signs and symptoms. After going through many steps, multiple copies of the new virion come out of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex and are released from the cell to infect the other cells. The virus then enters the other cells. Its antigen faces with antigen presentation cells, APC, which is a central part of the body's antiviral immunity. What's the outcome with APC contact? When a virus comes in contact with APC, three things occur. Number one, the cells produce IgM and IgG antibodies. The IgG antibodies have a four-fold rise. IgG antibody can last for a long time, indicating a protective role. Second thing that occurs is that cells stimulate the body's humoral and cellular immunity mediated by virus-specific B and T cells. The third thing that occurs, the cells produce inflammatory cytokines, interferon, interleukins, TNF-alpha, and chemokines. One of the main mechanisms for ARDS is the cytokine storm. Let's discuss cytokine storm. The deadly uncontrolled local and systemic inflammatory response resulting from the release of large amounts of pro-inflammatory cytokines that include different types of white blood cells, macrophages, and monocytes as well as inflammatory cytokines, interferons, interleukins, TNF-alpha, and chemokines. The cytokine storm triggers a violent attack by the immune system on the body which causes ARDS and multiple organ failure and death in severe cases. Cytokine storm begins in the lungs and spreads throughout the body via circulation. Overproduction of pro-inflammatory immune cells and cytokines in the lungs causes inflammation and edema that leads to respiratory distress and can lead to secondary bacterial pneumonia that increases the patient's mortality. Cytokine storm also occurs in several types of infections and autoimmune conditions. Now, increased capillary permeability syndrome, CD8 plus T cells, and natural killer cells in the severe disease are potent contributors of cytokines to the inflammatory response in infected tissues and contribute to vasodilation during critical phase of the illness. Local tissue edema causes an increase in extravascular pressures and a decrease in tissue perfusion. Also also causes endothelial dysfunction and compromises integrity of the endothelial cell junction. So increased in extravascular pressures, decrease in tissue perfusion, endothelial dysfunction, and compromise integrity of the endothelial cell junction. In addition, plasma proteins accumulate in the air spaces along with cell debris. Most permeability-inducing factors bind to endothelial cell plasma membrane receptors and cause an increase in intracellular calcium. There is also increase in plasma levels of free vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, at the time of plasma leakage. What is the T cell's response in severely ill and uncomplicated cases? The T cell responses in severely ill patients by producing more interferon gamma and TNF and very little CD107A, which is a marker of cytotoxic degranulation. Conversely, in uncomplicated cases, relatively more T cell display less interferon gamma and TNF and more CD107A. So in severely ill cases, T cells will produce more interferon gamma and TNF and very little CD107A. And in uncomplicated cases, the T cells will produce less interferon gamma and TNF, but an increased amount of CD107A. Now let's discuss the other cytokine, interferon. This is an antiviral substance produced by the cell and consists of interferon alpha, beta, and gamma interferon. Next is interleukins. They may be either pro or anti-inflammatory. Interleukin 1 alpha, interleukin 1 beta, and interleukin 6 as well as interleukin 8 are pro-inflammatory cytokines. Interleukin 6 is a key mediator of cytokines cytokine storm. Interleukin 1 beta is a key pro-inflammatory cytokine 
obtained from bronchoalveolar lavage fluid of patients with lung injury. Interleukin-4, interleukin-10, and interleukin-13 are anti-inflammatory cytokines. Interleukin-10 production following the onset of a cytokine storm is associated with decrease of neutrophil, and monocyte function in the systemic circulation. Interleukin-10 is a marker of anti-inflammatory response termed immunoparalysis. Next up is TNF, tumor necrosis factor. It's a pro-inflammatory cytokine which activates cytotoxic T cells and plays a central role in acute viral diseases and it has a prominent role in the cytokine storm. TNF-alpha and interleukin-6 are the primary contributors of cytokine storm. Chemokines, there are many different types and majority of chemokines are pro-inflammatory and chemoattractants. They are released by cells in response to virus or other infections and help to bring neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, and lymphocytes to the site of infection. In the early phase of the cytokine storm, there is an increased interferon alpha, interferon gamma, and TNF receptors that remain elevated until defervescence occurs when interleukin-10 rises. As I have already discussed that interleukin-10 causes immunoparalysis. Some of the severely ill patients have increased level of plasma pro-inflammatory cytokines including interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, especially elevated serum levels of interferon alpha, interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6, and other cytokines listed. After the acute phase, serum cytokine concentrations of interferon gamma and interleukin-10 are at or near their peak levels. As I already told, what are the pulmonary features of a cytokine storm? There is desquamation of the pneumocytes. There is interstitial infiltrate made up of lymphocytes and mononuclear cells Giant cells are also seen. Highland membrane is also present. Hypoxemia leads to dyspnea. Microvascular occlusion leads to diversion of blood flow from ventilated areas. Increasing dead space causes hypercapnia. What is the outcome of the cytokine storm? There is acute lung injury, ALI, is a common consequence of a cytokine storm in the alveoli. ALI is characterized by an acute mononuclear neutrophilic inflammatory response followed by a chronic fibroproliferative phase marked by progressive collagen deposition in the lung. ALI can progress to ARDS. Severe inflammation damages local tissue structures. Healing occurs with fibrosis which can result in persistent organ dysfunction. What is the difference between ALI and ARDS? ALI is less severe than ARDS. In ALI, the PO2 FiO2 is 200 to 300 millimeters of mercury. In ARDS, the PO2 and FiO2 are less than 200 millimeters of mercury. Patients with persistent downregulation of, of HLADR, which is a marker of immunosuppression, on monocytes three to four days after the onset of cytokine storm has a high mortality rate. So the clinical features, apart from respiratory system involvement, CVS, GIT, GUT, CNS are also affected. What are the CNS features? Confusion, delirium, hallucinations, tremors, seizures, and loss of coordination. The lab investigations and diagnosis, CT scans are significant for the diagnosis of SARS cov 2 infection. What about the chest x-ray? The chest x-ray may vary in different patients. It may have pulmonary infiltrates and patchy areas of consolidation in the peripheral and lower fields which may progress to diffuse involvement with bilateral ground glass opacities. Here is another example. Once again, bilateral opacity. What is the finding in sputum? The patient's sputum shows positive real-time polymerase chain reaction that confirms the diagnosis. The blood picture is neutropenia, lymphopenia in about 50% of patients, thrombocytopenia, 
increased serum level of C-reactive protein, ESR, and D-dimer, aminotransferases, creatinine kinase, lactate dehydrogenase, and transaminases, nitrogen compounds, low blood oxygen, and bleeding.